I could not close out the season without bringing you guys a black and pink themed Dollar Tree Halloween DIY video. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. All right, sweet friends, we're gonna start off by spray painting these skulls from Dollar Tree with some black spray paint. Once they were completely dry, originally I was gonna take these pink gems from Dollar Tree and put those in the eyes of the skulls. However, they were just a little bit too big and they looked too wonky for my liking. So I did opt for some glue and some glitter. Now, hindsight is 2020. I'm going to show you guys what I mean here in just a second. So I put a little bit of glue in the eyes and actually one of you guys sent me these little glue. I don't even know what you want to call it. They're like squeezable Elmer's glue. I actually love them, but I should have done one at a time. So I should have put some glue in the eyes of one, spread the glue, put the glitter, and then did the second one. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I was saving some time by doing both of the glue at the same time. But it just kind of uh, gathered in the middle of the eye because of the plastic. And then I had to go back in and fix it, which is really no big deal. But I just wanted to make you guys aware that you will definitely save some time by doing one at a time. So once I did the glitter, then I just shook it out. And I did get this pink glitter from Dollar Tree. And then I just used a paintbrush to clean up the skull heads. As you see here, because it separate or it gathered into the middle, I should say, I did go ahead and fill in the parts that were not covered with glitter. So once I was done that, then once again, I just cleaned up the skull head with a paintbrush to make sure there was no glitter left behind. And then do not waste your glitter, always put it back into your container. Once my glitter was dry, then I went ahead and painted the bottom of the skull heads with some acrylic paint. I do believe this color is called bubblegum, and I did get it at Walmart. And <laughs> y'all, I'm a mess. Again, hindsight is 2020. I should have painted the bottom with some white Waverly chalk paint first and then went over it with the acrylic paint but you live and you learn right so once I did two coats of the acrylic paint and let it dry in between coats, then I got the idea to make these bottom pieces kind of like an ombre effect. So I took the ballet slipper, I believe it's called, by Waverly Chalk Paint, and I just started by painting the entire thing over the acrylic paint with the ballet slipper or maybe it's just called ballet i'm not sure but i just painted it um over the acrylic and then i added the acrylic while the waverly chalk paint was still wet and then i just kind of built on those colors until it was super light at the top and then more pink at the bottom if that makes sense and i did that to both so now I'm going to show you guys how I do my finger bows. Now I'm not very good at explaining this. So that's why I slowed this down and I brought you guys pretty close so that you could see what I'm doing. But I'm making a double ribbon bow. I had to think about that for a second. A double ribbon bow. And now this is a little bit tricky to do if you don't really know what you're doing. So I would start out doing one at a time doing one ribbon at a time instead of trying to do a double bow and then once you get really good at one then you can work your way up to two three etc so sometimes um it's not very easy to push that loop through and knot it so that's why you just saw me kind of push each ribbon through the hole by themselves um, and then once you pull them off of your fingers then you can adjust your bow how you like it make it a little bit bigger make it smaller it's totally up to you and if you guys need to re-watch this tutorial just go ahead and rewind it or you can also slow the speed down that way you can see what I'm doing much slower it's totally up to you
So once I had two bows done, two double bows, I should say, done, then I went ahead and glued those to the bottom underneath the skull heads. So I set those aside and took these glittery bat clips from Dollar Tree and I put some more of that squeeze glue on there, making sure to give this a really good coat. Then I'm gonna separate the bats a little bit and I'm going to put glitter on both my bats. Once the glitter and the glue was completely dry, then I went ahead and removed the bats from the clip and I also cut off the part that connected to the clip underneath the bat and then I just glued my bats to the top of the skull kind of on an angle and I did do, the, do them in the opposite direction of each other. Obviously, like I said, I repeated that with the second one and literally you guys that was it for this project I absolutely love the way that these turned out fun fact I almost just moved right into Christmas, but I had already had this DIY filmed and I couldn't wait to show you guys So I just figured that I would bring you one more Halloween pink and black theme video and then soon We're gonna be getting into Christmas. Let me know if you're excited to see some Christmas DIYs. So if you guys are enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate if you would share it out, subscribe if you haven't already, become part of my crafty family. I see that 70% of you are actually watching, but you're not subscribed. So I would love to have you become part of my crafty family. And if you click the bell to all, once you subscribe, that will notify you, or I should say it should notify you every single time I upload. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that being said, let's jump back into today's video. Okay friends, so I want to start off by saying that this DIY is inspired by Luna Flores on TikTok. I will link her video down below because she did do a different version of this, but I wanted to do the ghost version. She did the skeleton version. So let me show you what I came up with after seeing her DIY. So I take these pumpkins from Dollar Tree and I remove the stem and then I start out by painting them with my white Waverly chalk paint, making sure to dry them before moving on to the next one. That way when I set it down on my wax paper or I should say parchment paper either way same thing right <laughs> but when I set it down my paint would not come off onto the parchment paper so once I had all of them painted obviously I learned from my last DIY then I'm going to take that bubblegum pink I put it in a container from Dollar Tree I also added the ballet or the ballet slipper uh, Waverly chalk paint and then I also added some Arteza pink I believe it's called bright pink or no it's actually called shocking pink so I added some shocking pink as well as the other colors to create my perfect pink color that I was going for look how gorgeous this color is and I just go ahead and give my pumpkins two coats of my mixture Next, I'm just gonna paint all of my pumpkins the same. Then I'm gonna take my stems and I'm gonna give them a good coat of my antique gold rub and buff. To bring out the details of the pumpkin, I take a very tiny paintbrush and I'm going to take some ink Waverly chalk paint and I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in the black really lightly. I'm gonna wipe off the excess and then with whatever is left on my brush I'm going to go over the divots or the details I should say 
of the pumpkin. I didn't want this to be too bright. I just wanted, like I said, a nice little shadowing. Um, and that's why I took some of the paint off of my brush after I dipped it in. But if you like them really bold, then you can just go right in after you dip your brush into your paint. So then I added all of the stems after I brought out all of the details on the other pumpkins and set those aside. Then I'm gonna take four of these hanging ghosts from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take off the packaging and then I'm just gonna start by adjusting the arms to the side but then also to the front as if it was going to hold something as well once i had all of my ghosts in the same position then i'm going to take this wreath form from dollar tree and some zip straps i'm going to pull the fabric away from the arms and i'm going to zip strap <laughs> yeah i'm going to zip them down <laughs> That's what I was about to say. I'm going to zip strap the arms down on one side of my wreath form. I repeat that with the second arm. And then I'm going to go directly behind this ghost and add the second one. That way I can make sure that all of my ghosts are nice and even. Once I had all four of my ghosts zip strapped down to the wreath form from Dollar Tree, then originally I was just going to try to glue the pumpkins to the hands of the ghost, but th because they're metal, it didn't want to stick very well. So what I did was just took the arms and I took my needle nose pliers and then I just pulled the wire out from the arms as you can see here and then I just attached the pumpkins in between and then push the fabric back over those arms and I repeated that step for the last two. Now she's coming together. I'm so excited to show you guys the end result. So in Luna's original video, she actually had the chains from Dollar Tree that were just the chains, but my personal my personal Dollar Tree, oh my gosh, you guys, all I want for Christmas is to be able to talk. I don't know how you guys deal with me. <laughs> I appreciate and love you guys so much. But anyway, I take the cuff part off of the chains on either end and then I attach them in between each ghost on the wreath form and then with the fifth chain I attach all of them together to be able to hang it and literally you guys this project was so simple and easy to put together look how gorgeous this turned out I absolutely love it and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think down in the comments section below now let me know also after you watch Luna's video do you like the ghost version with the the pumpkins better or do you like the skulls moving on to the last and final project if you guys made it this far please leave me a halloween emoji down below and just know that i love and appreciate you guys so much so i'm gonna take these signs from dollar tree i got these years ago at valentine's day y'all the amount of Dollar Tree supplies that I have is actually ridiculous. I don't even need to shop for any new seasons, but I just love all the new items. I can't stay away. Is it just me? Like, let me know. <laughs> let me know I'm not alone. So anyway, I'm going to take the hanger off and then attach these signs, putting the holes together in the middle and then attaching them from the front of the sign with some hot glue and some large popsicle sticks that I get from Walmart. And I cover the holes with the popsicle stick. That way, when I flip it over, I used my lightweight spackling to cover up the holes. And the large popsicle sticks are gonna make sure that the spackling stays in the holes. Once they were completely dry, then I sanded that down and I gave this a good coat of my chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree. Once that was completely dry, then I'm going to take my No Rest for the Wicked from Chalk Couture and I will leave this transfer if I can find it, if it is still available, down below for you guys. And if you guys want to save 40% off of anything on the chalk site, 
Um, you guys can text my number, the word chalk. I'll get you guys all that information over. You do need to become a designer, but there is no requirement to actually sell anything. I do have a lot of people that sign up just for the discount. I actually personally signed up just for the discount. Um, so it's totally up to you, but it is worth every penny and more. I get questions like, why do you use Chalkator when most people have a Cricut? Okay, well, I personally don't have time for Cricut. It takes a while. Um, you also need a computer system. You have to be computer savvy to figure out the software. And literally, my daughter started chalking at four years old. So if my four-year-old can chalk, anybody can. So I just love how quick it is, the versatility, how beginner-friendly it is. Like, the, the list goes on and on. If you guys have never tried chalk, chalk couture before, you're missing out. Um, and I know not everybody can afford it, but... Y'all, I worked really hard to afford the supplies that I have, so why would I not use them? It's kind of like a no-brainer. But anyway, I went ahead and transferred on this image with my gold, my peony, my rose gold. Sorry, y'all, I couldn't think of it. And my white paste. Once I was completely done, I took my transfer off and then I put some Mod Podge on the bats at the top and covered those with some pink glitter from Dollar Tree as well. Next, I want to take some square dowels, which are always linked in my Amazon shop. Y'all, these are an amazing thing to have in your craft stash. Um, but I just go ahead and lay this to one side of my sign, mark where I need to cut it, and then cut that down with my miter shears, which are also linked in my Amazon shop. I then hold that piece up to another piece, mark it, and cut that. Then I'm going to add both to the side, take another square dowel to the bottom, measure where I need to cut that, cut that down, and cut my fourth piece to match. Once I was completely done cutting my square dowels, then I'm going to take that pink paint mixture that we made and I'm going to paint all of my dowels. And I just kind of wanted to take you through the process of painting my dowels because if you try to paint them individually, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So what I do is I paint the ends and then I put all of my dowel rods together as if it was one big piece. Paint that, dry that side, and then flip them all, push them together again, and just repeat that until they're all covered. So once they were all covered and completely dry, then I'm just going to put them all together once again and dry brush three sides of my dowel rods with some ink Waverly chalk paint and my mini chip brush. And y'all, sorry, not sorry. I just want to put a little disclaimer. If you guys can hear my kids, they're playing out there. My husband is in the living room with them. And we do have a one floor house. So <laughs> this is their home as well. And they're having a good old time. So if you hear them screaming, playing, laughing, whatever, it's just because they're having a blast out there together. So anyway, once I was done dry brushing my dowel rods and those were completely dry, I'm going to take a very tiny dowel rod. I believe this is 5 16 and I'm going to cut that down. These are four foot dowel rods. So I do just mark it every foot. Cut those down with my miter shears. And then I'm going to glue those to each side on the edge. That way when I glue the frame, I have something to glue to. And then for the last side, my dowel rod would not fit across over top of the popsicle stick. So I did just cut that in half and add my dowel rods on either side of the large popsicle stick. Once I was completely finished with the dowel rods in the back, then I'm just going to use some hot glue and glue my frame all the way around.
And last but not least, to finish this off, I'm going to take this moss from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to glue that down to the bottom just to kind of make it look like a graveyard, make it look old and spooky. And you see my seven-year-old here crafting with me, both using the glue gun. I didn't want you to get freaked out if you saw the glue gun disappear and not me grab it. So anyway, that was it for this sign and this video, you guys. Let me know down in the comment section which DIY was your favorite. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think. And do you guys like this pink and black themed Halloween projects or are you more of the traditional color? So with that being said, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You can do anything you set your mind to. Coming from an addict who is nine years sober, y'all, if I can do it, I know that you can do it as well. And I just always like to share that I recently lost 80 pounds of fat. I really had a hard time losing the weight. And once I finally got a regiment down, I really wanted to share it with other people. So I did create a 21 page guide that I would love to share with you guys. So if you guys want that guide, just text my number, the word guide, or if you want chocolate couture info text me the word chalk and i will get that over to you with that being said i love you so much i'll catch you in the next one bye check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the diy fam here to your right